to this now where the basic education laws amendment has uh, largely been rejected by stakeholders in the education sector. It comes after the Standing Committee on Education hosted a two-part public hearing to receive public comments on the Bella Bill. Now the hearings were part of preparations for submission to the National Council of Provinces. Responses were received from a wide range of stakeholders, including parents who homeschool their children, educationists or community organizations, legal experts, political parties and trade unions. The consensus among the speakers was largely opposed to the bill because of concerns over parental rights, education quality and child well-being. Objections included external influences on education, a lack of stakeholder consultation and specific clauses on attendance, language policies and sexuality education. The inclusion of provisions for the criminal prosecution of parents who failed to ensure their children's school attendance was strongly criticized. An overriding objection was the emphasis on centralized government control of the education system. The majority of participants rejected the bill entirely, advocating improved education standards and increased consideration of parental and community input. Let's get some reaction. We're joined by ACDP Member of Parliament, Mari Sukas. Uh, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. The bill has sparked a lot of controversy and of course drawn uh, criticism from various quarters. As the ACT, ACDP, you as a party have been very, very vocal about this matter. Talk to us about some of your major and pressing concerns. Good evening, good evening, and thank you for having us on. Good evening to the listeners. It is ex very concerning, it should be for our country. Last year, in the State of the Nation address, actually this year, mm -hmm. one of the things that was said by the president uh, of this country was the protection of our constitution and our democracy. One of the biggest concerns for the ACDP has been how it exposed the process of the Bella Bill, the political uh, deafness of political representatives, specifically the African National Congress, when it comes to the concerns of South African parents. The process of the Bella Bill has shown that the constitu constitutional duty of both houses are taken very lightly by the public representatives who forgets the very people who has put them into those seats. Um, and the process of the Bella Bill is what has been most concerning the public participation process and the deliberations in both houses. Mm. Some uh, who are not as skeptical of the bill have said that it doesn't have intentions of sidelining sections of the community. Um, we also know that, uh, you know, some people uh, like the Afroforum Youth, for instance, has taken its fight for the Afri Afrikaans language to the union building, saying the bill is a stark reminder of how the Afrikaans language was once rejected. What is your view and your sentiment around that? Well, the Bella Bill really is an administrative bill. It gives more jobs for bureaucrats. And what it does, it gives, it centralizes power to the states to the point where it undermines parental rights. These are very critical values-based issues that are close to the hearts of South, African, uh, South Africans. 80%, I'm sitting in the Northern Cape now, 80% of people here in the Northern Cape has rejected this bill. Yet, the Northern Cape Provincial Legislator uh, gave a full ma mandate to the National Council of Provinces without any changes on the legislation. It is deeply concerning that we are sitting with provincial legislators and lawmakers in the National Assembly, as I said before, that are mm -hmm. totally deaf to what the concerns are of South African parents. Being deaf to those concerns, are you not worried that uh, the bill could be passed without being amended? They are dead set on that. Mm -hmm. Very clearly, they are dead set on that. And uh, this bill is going to go to court. The, the uh, civil society, together with political parties, has made it very clear that they're going to challenge the, the legislation based on the flawed process that was followed in the National Assembly and now in the provincial legislators um, uh, throughout the country.
We are very concerned with the fact that taxpayers' money is being wasted, that you clearly have a political agenda where the, Nas the African National Congress is more interested on the ideo ideology that they are driving than the concerns of the parents who has made their voices heard. You must know this bill is the most... Uh, most uh, parents or the, this legislation has mobilized South African parents in a way that no other legislation has done since the dawn of democracy. Mm -hmm. And it should be for them all the more uh, uh, in principle important that they then um, pay attention to what was said because it is so uh, people are so passionate about the education of their children and the education landscape in South Africa. In, in politicizing the agenda what do you think uh, the ANC will benefit from that? Well it is clear that they have um, they have committed themselves uh, to stakeholders, as you can see in the policy document on learner pregnancy, parents are literally excluded uh, from the uh, vital decisions when a child has uh, experiences an unpla unplanned pregnancy or uh, a teenage pregnancy. It, stakeholders are mentioned more in that document to be consulted than parents. And clause 39 of the bill gives the minister the power to issue regulations um, on learner pregnancy. Now, those regulations, once issues, issued, becomes law. So the concerns for parents are that our right as a parent is literally being disregarded by this government and the homeschooling parents has made it clear that there has not been effective consultation with them. Yet we have bureaucrats who has written um, clauses that has a material impact on those parents. It is deeply concerning for us that you have a political agenda, you have stakeholders and parents that are being made passengers in the lives of their children. Mm. How would you like to see this bill being revised? We want this bill to be um, to to really be be scrapped at the moment. Mm -hmm. We want the ECD sec uh, sections of the bill to be paid attention to. As you know, in our townships, especially um, ECD is is one of the most um, I would say economic rich uh, opportunities for people for women, especially. Uh, the Bella Bill does not even um, address that. We have. One of the things, and we don't have time on your program now, that yeah. I would like to emphasize is that we have, we had the Children's Amendment Bill in social development. Mm -hmm. We had the Basic Education um, Laws Amendment Bill in this committee in the Basic Education. Um, and both these two uh, processes were, were run in the same term. I am on both committees. ECD fell under social development. It is now part of basic education. Yet, this legislation, the current legislation, has not touched on that. In the Children's Amendment Bill, ECD, all those clauses that we went to the public, uh, um, um, engaged the public on, has been rejected, taken out of the Children's Amendment Bill. You see, all these processes does not deal with the realities on the ground for people. And this is why uh, 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 parents, uh, civil organizations are so up in arms with the waste of taxpayer money, the ineffective processes. It is dysfunction at its best. Mm. We want ECD to be um, addressed uh, properly for the Bella Bull um, and the homeschooling section to be rewritten in consultation with the homeschooling um, communities. And we definitely want the minister to make learner pregnancy a priority by giving it specific attention in, in, a, in a revised bill. Very well. Thank you so much for weighing in on this discussion and sharing your views with us. ACDP Member of Parliament, uh, Mari Sukas, weighing in, of course, on some of the issues around the Bella Bill and uh, what uh, they would like to see happen.